In this video today, I'm gonna to go over a platform that's just released that makes it super easy to create your own PFP collection on ordinals. And the way they do that is actually by the utilization of recursion. Now, if you don't know what recursion is, what it allows is the referencing of other content from other inscriptions on the network. And we're gonna go straight into an inscription, just to make a little bit more sense on that as well. So this one here, we've got a Fomoji, and that's made by the team who actually created General Ord. And this image here, if I can right click save it, and it's actually quite a high res image. But what we don't see is that's actually multiple parts stitched together. So this is pulling content from other images that are on the network already. And if we have a look here and we inspect it, we can see this one up here is the actual face that's there. And then we've got the rare tattoo there. It's a bit hard to see potentially. Um, and then we've got another tattoo on the right side, the shirt, the background. And so this is all happening behind the scenes. Let's go over a couple of other things. What does the platform do? What are the options? So you can generate a PFP collection. You can generate a membership pass. So all images are identical, but they have, uh, they're assigned a number. So you could have passes per se. And a banner creator, basically stitching images together to create a banner or stitching your inscriptions together to create a banner. Now, when I say you're stitching them together, you're not really stitching them together, you're just referencing the content for each of them. So for the generative PFP collection, there's a few different things that you need. To start off with, like in this image here, you need to make sure you inscribe your individual traits. So all of these numbers here are actually their inscription IDs. And so you've inscribed the shirt, and then you could use this shirt in 10 other images, 20 other images, so they can be used again and again. The code handles that are behind the scene. And I might have 100 different traits and they might be spread 10 across 10 different uh, trait types. So you might have different heads, you might have different uh, face accessories, you might have different hats. And so that'll be 10 to the 10 power of the amount of actual uh, variants that you can create of that. So yeah, you could create so many different PFP collections based on a hundred different traits. So it's really cool that they're uh, utilizing this. I know I just told you the first step is to inscribe your traits and that definitely is, but I'm gonna take a step back and tell you why you should actually use a platform like this. General order is actually extremely easy to use, but the main benefit is they're using recursion as we talked about. And the file size difference or the savings you make from inscribing individual traits and then using them through recursion is quite large. So they've given an example in their documents which says Fomojis 2.0 has 2009 images, roughly 46 kilobytes. So it would have been 92.4 megs if you were to inscribe all of them at a fee rate of 10 sats per vbyte. And the total cost of all 2009 images would have been around 2.31 Bitcoin. Now I'm gonna skip through all this, but if you were to do trait based, so not inscribing images at all, inscribing the traits and then referencing them, you would have only spent 0.09 Bitcoin. So uh, it, it works my wonders. All right, let's have a look at the platform. Of course, first step is to connect your wallet. Once you're connected, um, you won't have these options here. Of course, I've been playing around. Um, you might see an interesting name there. Uh, but the first thing we want to do is create a new collection. Now, you've got two different options here as well. Uh, you can create a generative PFP collection. That's what we're going to be doing. That's what we've been talked about. Or you can use Ditto, which is just a the same image with a unique token ID. But let's dig into a PFP collection. So it's a very simple UI. Uh, straight off the bat, we have the traits, metadata, and scribe. You can't select these two until you've completed the trait section. And you have your settings. So image smoothing uh, determines how it is rendered. Now, for things like uh, pixel-based images, you don't want image smoothing to be on. So we're going to turn that off because the example we're using is pixel-based. And we're going to make sure it's rendered out to 1024. Now, compressing the metadata when it actually, when you upload your metadata, which is all the traits uh, the way you want them to be, it will compress that into a smaller gzip uh, file format, I believe. Cool. So this is when things actually start to get probably a little bit, uh, I'm not going to say trickier, but a bit more complex. So you have to upload a JSON format file and they've given you references here. So let's have a look at the docs and then I'll show you the examples of one just to make it a bit clearer. As we talked about, you've already inscribed your traits, you know your inscription ID, you know the trait name, and you know the trait type. 
What we're going to do now is just copy this here, clicking on that there. And I'd highly recommend you use a program like Visual Studio Code. It just makes it a lot easier and you'll see in a second. All right, I've opened a new file in Visual Studio Code. I'm just going to paste that example that we saw before. Now what you're seeing here is a few different sections that have trait type, trait name, trait type, trait name. And so the trait types, I'm just going to start filling this out so it makes a bit more sense. So you want to have your, I've got backgrounds in my images, I've got hats in my images, so there's two different trait types. And you'd keep on adding your different trait types. So I've got a red background, so let's put red in there. I've got a black background. And what happens here is you then put in your inscription ID in between the quotes for your red background. You put the inscription ID in between the quotes for your black background. So that's the trait type, trait name. And you notice there's got a comma at the end of this one here. And that's because it's like, if you have a comma there, it's expecting something on the next line down. So we can just copy this one here and let's put a gold background in there. Now, if you ever want to stop adding uh, traits to the background type, then you just delete the comma and then you can continue on with your next one. So once again, for hats, we could do a red hat. I'm not being very creative, am I? Let's do a top hat. And the thing to bear in mind is the spelling in this here has to be consistent throughout. So the spelling you use here has to be the same as the next document or the next uh, when you put your metadata in later on. So I would then go find my red hat inscription and paste the inscription ID here. I would then find my top hat inscription, paste the inscription ID here and so on. And you continue doing this for the rest of your traits. If you had another trait type, you'd put a comma here and just for make it nice and easy on yourself, you can copy this stuff here, paste there. Make sure we close that one off there. And it's already given me a warning saying, hey, you've already got hats, let's not do that. So left object. Let's make a wand and a fork, I don't know why I picked fork. And then you'd paste the inscription ID of your left object wand and so on. So hopefully that makes a bit more sense. Let's look at one that I've already done and go over that as well. Backgrounds, and then we've got aqua, blue, brown, cosmos, uh, and then all the inscription IDs are here as well. And you notice how they're all different and that's because that's what it should be. They should all be different inscription IDs there. But I was just checking why that highlighted it. It's because it's got a 20 and a, a 2. So they are definitely different, those ones there. Cool. So once you've saved that, make sure you save it as a .json file, .json. And then you head back to Generate, Board, and then we're going to Upload. So I'm going to choose a file and save. Now you might be noticing the name there. Yes, that is the Wizzies. We're not going to go into all the traits because they're going to stay a bit of a mystery as well. Now, all the items are actually in here. Uh, let's go face items. We'll just show a couple. All right, that's enough. Um, but yeah, you'll notice all your items are actually in here. So straight away, it uploads that. Next step is creating your metadata. Now, once again, this is the part that you have to do a little bit of work in, putting in all the details about the way you want the different traits. So if we go to the docs, you can see that's the format there. So we're just going to copy it. Go back to Visual Studio Code, new file, paste that in. Metadata is the important one because it uh, determines how the image is going to be, how it's going to be laid out. So what you want to think about is anything between these square brackets here is going to be your end result. The trait type, before we had backgrounds, so we're going to put a background in course. Everything's going to have a background. And we're going to use our red background. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we had a red background before. And you want to make sure the name's consistent from your traits you just created uh, to your metadata that you're creating. So this image would have a black background. Uh, it would be quite boring if it just had a black background. So we need to give it another trait. Let's give it a, what was my other ones I used before? Let's give it a hat. So make sure the spelling is the same between both of them. I don't know, I had red hat before, so we'll use red there. Brilliant. As we are talking about before, if there's a comma there, it expects more. But right now, this inscription, anything between these square brackets here, would be the inscription that we're creating. So this would be our number one item when we create those inscriptions. And it would be a red background with a red hat. 
Pretty boring. If you want to add more traits, you put a comma to the end there. And then you want to make sure you you add another trait type. And once again, I think that was left object. And we had a fork. Yeah, let's add fork. So now my number one inscription, the first inscription I create would be a red background, red hat with left fork. And then you could make this one, once again, background. And we're going to go gold background. But this is you creating the actual layout of the inscriptions when they get created using this metadata. And so you'd go on continuing creating more and more and anything between square brackets, you can continue to add more. So and when you get to the end, you don't want to add any more. You just remove the comma there. At the moment, all these would be the same because I've just created five or six with red background, red hat, left object being a fork. But you can see how you then customize them all and change out those traits and make them how you want to be. Now, remembering this, the names, so I'll, I'll run over a couple of really important things. The, the format, so background, when the inscription is created, the background will go first. Then you would have the hats. Then you would have the left object. So the order these are in is actually the order of the traits that they're, when the inscriptions are created. Uh, we've got quite a few here. Um, there's no errors, so we know we're good to save that file and then upload to general order. What I will do is create another video that goes over how I managed to create 999 different versions uh, within a couple of minutes uh, with some scripting language. And then also it gives you a report. So total inscriptions, trait count distribution. So 830 had eight traits, 160 had seven traits, and also has rarity input. So you can put in how rare you want the trait to be. Um, but I'm gonna make that another video. For now, you can uh, manually type out these here and hopefully it won't be too long. Uh, it is on my GitHub if you wanna go download the script anyway. All right, so once we have our metadata, let's head back to general org, and we're just gonna choose a file. And then save. So one thing you'll notice is the images actually look a little bit blurry. Now these are pixel 64 by 64 based images. Let's have a look, image smoothing is on, um, and we don't want that. We want it 1024 by 1024, I mustn't have saved this stuff before. So now if we go back, it's actually rescaled and look at the quality that we're seeing and how quick it loads up. Now I'm not gonna scroll through, scroll through all of them now because this is a surprise for you to see later on. We can already see how cool some of them look, but there's 999 there. I can just scroll through and see them straight away. This is how quick you can actually make a collection. This actually provides a really good chance for you to review your metadata and make sure you're actually happy. So you can scroll through all of these and see how they are before you actually uh, go to the next stage, which is inscribing. You have two different options when you go to inscribe. You can inscribe with general ord, which I'd highly recommend because it's damn cheap and it's very easy, or you can inscribe yourself. When you inscribe yourself, they'll send you the files that you need, so just the HTML files, and then you can go to a website to actually inscribe them yourself. When they do it, they just do it all. So they send it to your address, you can put it in your address here, uh, or you can go send to many. So you can enter, I could enter 999 addresses because there's 999 that'll be sending out. And it sends it out in order. So if you put one at the top, that's number one will be sent out. Number two will be sent out to second address and so on. But today we're just gonna send it to our wallet. There's a few settings that we'll go over. So currently mempool, let's have a look. Currently mempool is sitting at 15 sats per vbyte. Next is three. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, if I'm inscribing a lot, I'm probably just gonna go five and kind of average out between. Just bearing in mind, the lower you go, the less likely it'll be, it won't be straight away essentially. I'm just gonna go 10 players safe actually. And you have padding. So padding is the extra sats that go with your inscription. So your inscription is at the very start. I imagine it like a big bus. Your inscription is in the driver's seat and the rest are your passengers that go with, with your inscription. 
So number one is where your inscription lives and the rest is your padding. You, what I'd recommend is just going normal. Um, you're creating 999 different ordinals. So sometimes it's nice and safe to have them padded out. But if you know what you're doing and know how to handle ordinals, uh, 5,000 should be fine. 546 should be fine. Most of what, the risk that you have is if you have a low amount of sats in padding, sometimes there's risk that you might actually uh, spend one of your inscriptions to, to pad this for the fees because fees are taken from the very end of a UTXO range where the inscription lives. So play it safe, go normal or go 5,000. Um, I'm happy to go 546 because uh, I have a bit of an idea about what's going on. And then we just want to inscribe the collection. Little warning message, general order takes no responsibility for lost or invalid inscription due to the user error. And that's why you want to double check all your traits, make sure everything's right, all your naming's right. Um, one thing to note, if you do spell something incorrectly with your metadata, a general order will actually warn you, so that's a good thing. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, double check all your traits, make sure your inscription IDs next to your traits are correct. So the way you do that is when you first upload your traits, Go through every single thing that's in there. Make sure every image is the right one. Before inscribing, make sure to double check the following. The destination address is correct. So the address we put in before. The collection preview available here renders correctly. So the metadata, as we're showing before, you can go over them all. Make sure they're all correct. Hold your breath and inscribe. It will then pop up on your Xverse wallet and it will show you the amount that it's going to cost you. And then you confirm that from there. Now, a really cool thing about this is it does actually show you uh, your inscriptions straight away, your inscription IDs, but not until they're confirmed. You can actually view them uh, in on ordinals.com. Your inscriptions have successfully been submitted to General Ord. They'll be broadcasted as soon as possible. Your inscriptions will not be visible until they're confirmed. It typically takes at least two blocks before your inscriptions are confirmed, but depending on your collection size and network fees, it could take longer, as we are talking about before. One thing I will go over, and this is if you want to go a little bit deeper again. So... We uploaded the traits, we uploaded the metadata, and we told the we told General Ord how we want the images to look. And so how does that actually work together? How does it work with recursion? How does it work in the background? This is how. <laughs> so sorry if it's daunting at first, but the inscri this is the actual inscription. So when you go to, this is if you want to go deeper. If you don't, then you're all good. Just skip forward a little bit. Um, this is what happens. So you go to the website and it actually says it loads a script. So you go to ordinals.com, it loads the image, but it's loading a script at the same time. This is your inscription ID here, essentially. So the script says, we're gonna reference number 23 throughout this journey here. So the content that it's pulling first is actually that config file that you created. The config file, as we are talking about, has the image smoothing, whether it's off or on. This is from another one, not the one I just created, the size of it. But at the same time, it also pulls in information from your metadata. This is your metadata inscription ID. So it pulls in information from the metadata. So right now we can know that it's got number 23. That's the inscription. It's going to pull in information from there as well. It's going to pass information on to the processor. Now the processor is the brains. It uh, processes the metadata. So it takes this metadata in, decrypts it if it's in that decrypted format. It decompresses and then it passes it on. It passes it and then passes it on. At the same time, the processor actually prompts the website that you're looking at to load some more things as well. And what it does is then renders the inscription and shows the image on the website. So yeah, there's a lot of different things that are going on uh, to make this work behind the scenes, but it's it's really cool what the team has created. Well, that's it. You've created your own PFP collection on Ordinals. Congratulations. Go get it.